Amen. Are you glad you're here? Uh, if you're if you're online, if you're on Facebook, please connect with us. Share us your name and all information. If you help us do that, that helps us. Uh, if you're giving, you can give online. You can do it through the app. You can do it through the net. You can do it another way. You can mail it. Can I just tell you that we have given more money for food and for housing, uh, and we've done a so in our community, as well as continue to send money to overseas. Uh, thousands of dollars have gone to try to feed people in Kenya and in South Africa and in India. So you're giving. I, I cannot even begin to express to you what your giving in this moment has done. Uh, and uh, if I had time, I'd show you slides. I just don't know how to do it. So thank you for your giving. Please do that. Uh, please continue that. It just helps us to continue to do so many things. Can I preach to you this morning? I probably am not going to get you out of here by 12 20, or by 11:20. I, I probably going to take a little more than 20 minutes, uh, just so that you know that the restrooms are open. Uh, how many are in the room at the same time? But now you can make a restroom run. Christianity is such a big story. It's a story that for most of us begins on Christmas as Christ was born of a Virgin Mary and we celebrate Christmas that Christ was born, right? And then for some, they understand that the epiphany and how God began to do miracles through Christ and he raised the dead, he healed the sick, he fed the 5,000. And then for some people, they catch Lent, that journey towards the cross and that, that time of how Christ begins to move towards his death, burial, and resurrection. And then we all get Easter, right? We get the Passover, we get his death, and then we get his resurrection. And so the two biggies, right, are Christmas and Easter. And most people then go to the lake. Yeah. <laughs> right? Once Easter's over, we just check out. And we think something, the story is not over. Not by a long shot. And if you follow the story of the church, there's his birth and there's his death and resurrection. And then uh, for 40 days, he reveals himself to his disciples as resurrected. And then he ascends into heaven 10 days ago. And on the 50th day, and I would dare any of you to go and start counting how long COVID and stay in place has been here. It's right at 50 days. And, and then on the 50th day of his resurrection, they were all they were all in a stay-at-home order. They were all sheltering in place, and they had to quarantine, and they'd been there for the second time. The first time they were in quarantine, it was because of fear that they themselves were going to be killed. But this time, they were in a stay-at-home order by faith, that he had told them to go there and to stay. He had told them to stay in that place until something happened, to stay put to stay in prayer, to stay focused, to stay together, to stay in Jerusalem. And the name of Jerusalem is peace, to stay at peace. How many Christians have not remained in peace over the last seven weeks? But we were told to stay in peace, to shelter in His presence, in the place that He had prepared for us. And 120 people had sheltered in the peace of God, waiting on something called the Holy Spirit to descend and empower them to fulfill what He had called them to fulfill. And verse 1, it said, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, fully come. What that means is, is that had it fully come. It's not getting better. It got great right there. In other words, he poured out the whole ball of wax on the very first day. And that everything that he is is available to us today. It had fully come. And they were all in one accord, say one agreement. Let me tell you, Pentecost will not happen until the church stops sharing her opinions of different issues, but begins to come into full agreement that Jesus has resurrected from the dead and that Jesus is Lord and that he will send the power upon his church to be who he called us to be. They were in one accord. They weren't debating politics. They weren't debating denominations. They were focused on one thing. Jesus had been resurrected from the dead and he had promised to send something to them that was going to change their lives eternally they were in one accord they were in one place and suddenly a sound from heaven say a sound 
Say a sound. Come on, we're in Kansas. A sound of a rushing mighty wind. Something like a sound of a wind. And you know wind doesn't make a sound? This is nuts, but you ought to get this. Wind doesn't make sound. That tree makes the sound. What you hear is the vibration of the movement of the wind. Unless there's something that's resisting the wind, there is no sound of wind. But if you put up a telephone pole and blow an 80 mile of wind by it, it'll vibrate and you'll hear the vibration of that that it's blowing through. When God breathes into you, there'll be a vibration that comes out of you. They were told, they were told to stay in this place. They were told to wait, that those that wait upon the Lord will rise up on wings of eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. That if you wait on this that I promised you, it's to your advantage that I go there. Because if I go there, uh, then he's going to come here. And when he comes here, you're going to be clothed with a power that will cause you to sustain everything that I caused you to do. He had told them to go, but he said, before you go, get this. Before you go out into the world and try to take care of everything, listen, Moses, I didn't tell you to kill that guy. I told you to wait till I told you to do it. Listen, there's too many Christians trying to live the Christian life without, a, without being empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. There is no such thing as a Pentecostal church. There is no such thing as a church that's not received the Holy Spirit because if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, the Bible says you don't know who you are. I've been told my whole life that, well, you're Pentecostal. Well, if you believe in Jesus, you're Pentecostal. And if you're not, then you better back up and wonder it is who you're believing in. Oh, that'll get me lots of cards and lots of letters. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven as the sound of a rushing mighty wind. You see, there are winds that are distinct. When mama rang the bell, that meant supper was over. You didn't want to miss that bell. You don't want to miss that bell because she wasn't popping anything in later at 8 o'clock. When you rung that bell, that meant supper was on. If they ring a doorbell, you better answer it. If they honk the horn, you better look around. Different sounds have different meanings. And this sound was a spiritual sound. And there's a whole lot of sounds going on in the world today. Can I tell you, Christian, you need to turn your ears off to the sounds that are made by this world and begin to listen to the sounds that are coming from heaven. You better be careful who you listen to. You better be better careful who that radio is turned to, who that TV is on to. You better be careful because if you're not careful, you'll be distracted by the sounds of this world and miss the sound of the voice of God who is coming. You ever just needed to hear her voice? You ever just needed to hear his voice? No matter what mama started saying, but when mama started talking to that baby, that baby went silent. You see, the Bible says that he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood still. That when he said, light be, light was. That when he spoke, material things came together. That all the material things that you see are brought together, put in order, and held in place because Papa spoke to it. That when Daddy spoke to it, all of this... ...heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden. You can hear God moving. If you pay attention, you can hear God moving. Somebody told me the other day, said, I never hear God. And I said, get silent. Well, I don't hear anything. I said, get more silent. So I still don't hear Your head must be screaming. You've got to learn how to meditate, grow still, so that you can hear the sound of God walking in your presence. Because I promise you, it is God that's carrying you through this moment, not the other way around. Joshua understood that when the trumpet blew, the walls would come down. Listen, we must understand that Elijah knew that he had the sound of abundance coming. What sound are we hearing? Are we hearing the sound of the voice of God creating and creating and creating? Are we hearing the sound of God walking with us? Are we hearing the sound of the trumpet removing the walls that keep us locked in or locked out? Are we hearing the sound of abundance that comes to provide for us in the midst of the famines? Are we hearing the sound of the marching of an army in the top of the trees that will empower David to take the city? See, whatever we are listening for, that's what we can expect to manifest. Jesus said, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, 
but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. But so is everyone who is born by the Spirit of God. Listen carefully to me. People are not born again because someone's given them an argument intellectually or theologically. People are born again because they hear the sound of the Spirit and they know that God loves them. When they begin to hear a voice that is raised above the voices of this world, when they hear the tenor, something deep inside of them says, yep, that's who made me. When they begin to hear the sound of the Holy Spirit and not the opinions of religious people, they will begin to respond to that voice and not to the denominational dogma that they've been listening to for years. The revival will happen not because suddenly people begin to go, oh, that doctrine is right. Oh, those people have it all together. Revival begins because there's a sound of a rushing mighty wind that touches the heart and the souls. And hear me, even if you're in this parking lot and you're as dead and as far away from God as you can be, it only takes one touch of the power of God and suddenly you'll go, Jesus is Lord. And church, if you're in this room and you haven't been able to witness to somebody, it's because you've been spewing out your opinions and dogma and denominational crap for so long that it has covered up the voice of a God that loves everybody. Red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in His sight. I learned that when I was a six-year-old boy. It would do good for us to understand that today God loves every soul. The sound of a wind. It's not the sound of legalism. It's not the sound of racism. It's not the sound of religion. It's the sound of God's love for every individual that was ever born. And then there appeared unto them divine tongues of fire, and one set upon each one of them, and they were all filled. Just look at your neighbor. Look them right now and say, all, honey, all. It said all. Yeah, but I just haven't got it. It said all, baby doll, all. Every one of you, George, every one of you. Well, it's just not who I am. I know it's not who you are. It's who he is, honey bun. All were filled. You couldn't have been in that room and not gotten filled because when he comes in, he's no respecter of person. He doesn't look to see if you're Baptist or Methodist Episcopalian. He doesn't look to see whether you're from Africa or Norwegian. He just said, I got you now. I don't care whether you're in a Toyota or a Ford. All were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues. Now this is not a message of tongues. I'm not trying to get any of you to talk in tongues, though I don't know how you talk without it. You'll get it in a minute. But they all begin to speak with a different tone. They all begin to speak with a different tenor. They all begin to speak with a different vibration. In other words, there was something in them to say something different than they had ever said before. Can I tell you, the 120 heard the sound, but the world, the city of Jerusalem, heard the voice of the 120. What you don't understand is that the Holy Spirit comes to change the way we speak so that they will begin to hear in a different way. The work of the Holy Spirit is so that you will say something different than you've been saying hitherto. Because we hear the sound, but the sound coming through us is now spoken to the world around us. That's what changes the world, is when the church starts speaking from the sound of God and not an echo from the world. Oh, well, you'll get it in a minute. And they were dwelling there in Jerusalem without men from every nation. And the sound occurred, and the multitude came together, each hearing in their own language, the Parthians, the Medes, the Amalites, those dwelling in Mesotopia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Figeria, Philia, Egypt, parts of Libya, joining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. Listen to this, verse 11. We hear them speaking the wonderful works of God. You, you didn't get it. A sound came from heaven, and it changed the 120. And when the 120 
open their mouth. They begin to preach the wonderful works of God. I wonder today what the world is hearing come out of the mouth of the church. Well, I've listened a little bit. And what preacher should be preaching is the wonderful work of God that is revealed through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. How God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that no matter what ethnicity, no matter what denomination, whether you were Jew or Gentile, that God came to give His love for all of you. That He loves you unconditionally. That He forgives you all at the same time. And that now you have been brought in as sons and daughters of the Most High God and this is wonderful news the wonderful news is the separation between God and humanity has been destroyed and we can all go home like the prodigal we can wake up and go back that's what the world began to hear they did not hear that you had to be Baptist they did not hear that you had to be baptized this way. They did not hear that you had to speak in tongues. They did not hear that you had to look like, act like, and be like that. They begin to hear that God has forgiven you. Now come running back home. And they were talking about the wonderful works of God. That God's love caused him to overlook at moments their behavior. And in verse 12, And they were all amazed and perplexed, and they said to one another, what could this mean? One translation says, what meaneth this? What does this mean? What does it mean when the sounds from heaven change the lips of men? What does it mean when the sounds of heaven take over the tongues of men? What does it mean when the sounds of heaven begin to speak the words of God? What does that mean? That means that the world is about to experience a change because there were at least a handful of people that could begin to agree on earth as it is in heaven that God so loved the world. What does that there are still many people that don't to be filled with the Holy Spirit? They're lovers of Christmas. They're lovers of Easter. But they have no meaning for what the Holy Spirit is. What's interesting is that if you go back into the Old Testament, with them out in the wilderness, and the bread falls out of heaven, boom! And they pick it up, and when they pick it up, they turn around and they go, manna. And in the Hebrew, it, go, it means, what's this? What this mean? Both when the bread came from heaven and when the Holy Spirit fell in the upper room, what meaneth this? You see, when God begins to give His gifts to people, it is so beyond our comprehension that we don't even know the meaning of this. It is so great and so powerful that when then we go to work trying to describe what does it mean. I've been in the way of the Lord for over 45 years. Can I tell you, I still don't know how to explain the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. I still don't know what it means. But I do know this. If my mouth doesn't line up with the sound of the voice of heaven, there is a conviction that goes deep inside of my heart and I realize that I have slipped over into myself and out of Him. And listen to me, Spirit-filled folks. You need to recognize that when God speaks out of us, it's a prophetic, unknown thing to us. And it rolls out of us and we're loving on people. Oh well, you'll get it in. There are some people that today are going, okay, I'm open to the Holy Spirit. I, I, what does it mean? But I'm going to tell you, I grew up with this next group of people. They spit on my grandma. They cursed at my papa. Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. You see, if you stay in a place where you don't understand the meaning, you'll become a mocker. And can I tell you that in America today, particularly in American Christianity, there are too many Christians that are mocking the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the church. That what is wrong in our society today is there's no understanding of the meaning of the Holy Spirit that will cause us to be one with God and one with one another. And when we mock the work of the mystery of the Holy Spirit down on the inside of our hearts, we are left with the division that you and I are facing today in America. 
that the hope of unity in the world is the receptivity of the presence of the sound of heaven that will join us together with a love that is undeniable. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not an option. It is the whole ball of wax. And Peter stood up at the eleven and raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be made known to you and hear or listen to me. Jesus said, if you have ears to hear, hear, because as you hear it, it will be measured to you. And those that have ears to hear, more will be given to you. Hear me again. Who you listen to will determine the very essence and value of your life. We must begin to hear the Apostle Peter as he begins to explain the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the Apostles. There are still a few today, a remnant, if you will, of people that can call us back to the reality that we must accept the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life today. And I'm not calling you back to get you to pray in tongues or to get you to be woo-woo. I'm calling you back so that you can begin to speak the wonderful works of God into the ears of people who have never heard them. Oh, well. Jesus said, today it's fulfilled in your hearing. And Peter stood up and he said, you need to listen to me. This, they are not drunk, as you suppose. They are not out of their mind, as you suppose. This that's happening right now is what the prophet Joel talked about. The prophet Joel said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon your sons and your daughters, and they will prophesy. They will see dreams and visions. He said he will restore what the canker worm has eaten. He'll restore everything back. When the Holy Spirit is received into a generation of people, you can put it in the bank. Restoration follows those who will receive the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. My friends, we don't have to be afraid of anything waiting 50 days to receive again the sound of the work of the Holy Spirit and now we can proclaim the wonderful works of God restore 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 and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved that's what this means the first bishop of the church stood up and said, let me explain to you what's going on. This is not a bunch of drunks that are emotionally geared. This is not a bunch of Pentecostals that live by emotion. These are people who have heard the sound of heaven and are declaring the wonderful works of God, which means that every man, woman, boy, girl, black officer, that every one of them are precious in his sight and that we must serve as those who bring us together and not tear us apart. Apart. If you speak other than that, I'm concerned today that many who even call them spirit filled are strangers to the reality of that sound. There are many today in the Pentecostal family that truthfully have acquiesced to an emotion. They have acquiesced to an act rather than through the reality of the relationship with the Spirit of God to which we surrender and who begins to take over our speech and our personality and our life. That we must be people who, though we have eyes and ears not to see, it has been revealed to us by the Spirit of the living God who searches the very deep things of God to make known to us things that others cannot see. This is the moment, if there was ever a time when the world needed the work of the Holy Spirit through a submitted, hu humble group of people called the church. That our faith is simply not some ancient act of Christmas and Easter or even in the upper room. That our faith is not merely something written in a book that draws dust on your coffee table. But that our faith is His living presence inside of you and I today that his faith is revealed through people whose tongues and hearts have been changed, that they speak of the wonderful works of God, 
that they speak unity and they speak encouragement and they speak forgiveness and they speak peace and that even in the midst of trouble they know that the Spirit of God is on the inside of them that the power of Pentecost is the celebration about how God came into our hearts and he lives in here that he is no longer out there or over there but he is inside of us that we are his throne and his temple and that we carry him everywhere we go and that no matter whether we're in the crisis of COVID or whether we're standing up in the midst of a racial storm that this country is today, that we can stand up and arise and speak the words of the Spirit of God and we can see unity and love and mercy. By this the world will know you're my disciples, not because you have an of black, not because you have an opinion of people in uniform, but because you have the voice of the Almighty God that's able to bring healing into the midst of a land. Those people, church, this is not a dry run. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is our life. This moment right here. We're not practicing to live. You're living. I'm going to finish this sermon. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to hold Linda's hand. And unless God does something miraculous between here and there, I'm going to help her step into glory. I, I, I'm going to get up from there and go get on a, on a telephone and talk to a place in Kenya where they are starving at the rate of about 200 children a day because they have no food. Then I'm going to go stand with some black friends of mine and stand there and say, that's not right. And when I do that, uh, then I'm going to get online with two or three police officers. One of them's in this parking lot, and I'm going to tell them that I know they're not like that. Oh, you didn't hear me. Just because you find a bad egg doesn't mean you stop eating eggs. That's silly. But I am intelligent enough to be able to deal with complex issues because this is my life. And I don't have time to be bouncing forth between opinions. I need to hear the sound of the Holy Spirit that changes my heart and changes my life and allows me to live in May 2020 and be the expression of the Christ today. And to speak to you of the wonderful works of God that will heal us of COVID, that will hold our hand if we have to step into heaven, that will help us to be peacemakers in the midst of a society that doesn't seem to be able to find it. That in these moments of 2020, the church is real. The body of Christ is necessary and needed. That we need to stay at peace, stay in prayer, and stay together. And that when we do, we can release the power of God into every situation that might come our way. That Christ is not in the tomb, He is in you. And that He wants to express Himself so that the world can know who he is. Hallelujah. Peter stood up and preached one of the greatest sermons I've ever heard or read in Acts 2. The Bible says 3,000 people came to the Lord that day. And when they heard it, they were cut to heart. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know as surely that God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what are we to do? Can I tell you, I've heard that for about 10 weeks now. What are we to do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Change your mind. Recenter your life. Focus on the love of God through Jesus Christ. Let every one of you be baptized. And that doesn't mean just get underwater. That means jump fully into the Christ. Give your life over to the totality of who Christ is. Become the lover that he is. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins will be forgiven. And some of you might. A few of you will. Oh, if you're born under a lucky star. No, he says, and you shall receive. If you change your mind and center on God, 
If you just step off over into all that He is, your sins will be forgiven and you'll receive the promise and the power of the Holy Spirit. You'll hear You'll speak new words. Your tone and your tenor and your touch will change. And when people see you, they'll see me. And they'll call you Christians because you'll be like I am. Just recenter on the fact that Christ is Lord. Step over into His love. And the Holy Spirit is upon you and within you. And For this is the promise to you, to your children, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord would call. Today, if we want to, we can hear the wind blowing in our lives. If we desire, we can allow that wind to vibrate through our tongues and our mouths. And we can send a different tone, a different tenor, and a different touch into the world. COVID would bow. Death would be destroyed. Racism once and for all would begin to fall under our feet, not because of laws. You say, Pastor, that's so odd. So woo-woo. Yeah, I know, I get it. Pastor, how, how are you going to get us? How are we going to receive the Holy Spirit? Well, I'm going to tell you another story. In Acts chapter 10, the same apostle Peter was standing on a roof and he went into a trance. He, he had some sort of out-of-body experience. Can't, he had a prophetic, weird experience. This apostle Peter is up on a roof and he hasn't been having mushrooms. He's just been praising God. And he sees a sheet that comes down out of heaven. And on that sheet are these animals that the Jews said were unclean. And God says, they're clean. And Peter said, no, they're unclean. And God says, if I say they're clean, they're clean. So they're clean. Say with me, they're clean. What you used to refuse, now you... What you used to exclude, I have included. Those people that weren't allowed in are now... Oh, you better hear me. I'm going somewhere. He was having a charismatic, Pentecostal, weird, transcendental experience on a roof. And someone knocked on the door. And it was a Roman. Go to Cornelius' house. A Roman soldier. And when he walked in the house, he said, you know, I'm not supposed to be here because you're Roman. But he began to tell of the wonderful works of God. And as he told of how Jesus came and gave his life, the power of the Holy Spirit began to fall on a bunch of Romans. Upon the enemy, if you will, the Holy Spirit began to fall because Peter began to speak of how great Jesus is. And when the Holy Spirit fell, Peter went, Shazam! Our theology just got changed because I had a trance. Do you understand God will change your theology if you ever have an encounter with the Holy Spirit? And in one moment, Gentiles, in one moment, Gentiles, which I think is most of you, were allowed into the church. Christianity was changed because some guy had like a mushroom-like experience on a roof in Joppa and went over to a Roman's house and went, wow, the Holy Spirit. Who have you excluded? Because you justified the exclusion because of your theology. Who have you kept outside of the grace of God because they didn't behave the way you wanted them to behave? Who have you kept out because you interpreted it this way? Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit comes and moves the boundaries and says, they're in too. They're part of me too. And the church changed 
because of the power of the Holy Spirit. I can never be a person. I can never be a person that sees color. I can never be a person that sees denomination. I can never see a person other than me because God's love is bigger than anything I have ever imagined or asked. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I just lost some of you. But I would rather do that than lose Him. Because all I speak to you is truth. It's the truth that will heal our land. It's the truth that will heal our country. It's the truth that will heal us today of our bitterness. Come Holy Spirit. Come and set freshly upon these people. Come and fill their hearts with a trance. Come and fill their hearts with mystery. Come and fill their lives with something beyond anything they've thought. In the midst of the crisis like we've never known. Father, come and change us. Take us places we never thought we would go. Teach us to speak to people who we thought were our enemy. Help us, Lord, to bridge the gaps through our intercession. Help us to be peacemakers in the time of conflict. Help us to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Lord, let us be as you are today in this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Sound of my voice and you've never said yes to Jesus, can I tell you, he has already said yes to you. He has already forgiven you and loved you. Do not allow the opinions, the theologies, or the stupid things of other people to keep you from knowing that God loves you. It's very simple. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe He gave His life and love for me. I believe He sends His Spirit into my heart whereby I cry, Abba, Father. So I stand publicly today and declare Jesus is the Lord of my life. I stand today and I declare Jesus is the Lord of whoever would call on Him. In the name of Jesus, I break the powers of darkness, of principalities, and of powers, and of rulers of wickedness in high places. I call for healing to stop COVID-19. I call for love to erase the division in our country. I call for us to stand up as one people, with one voice, with one Lord and Master and Savior of us all, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen.